What up, homies? Stop talking. Danger zone. Welcome to the danger zone. Strong calculations and stuff like that. Strong calculations in carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. <coughs> I haven't got Rona. That's just really peppery. That's smoke hit me. Trust me. Right. So, since we're now back in lockdown three, you know, electric boogaloo, no, that's that thingy two, ain't it? Lockdown three, lockdown with a vengeance. Oh, die hard for the. If weapon, if weapon three didn't have to one, would it? Die hard two was die hard with a vengeance. It was die hard three die hard with a vengeance? Anyway. Lockdown free, we're all back at this again. So, I figured, can't go out to eat, why not treat ourselves to a nice, cheeky steak meal for one? Or two, I'm doing it for one because I'm a sad, lonely bastard, I'm on my own. But, quite easily done for two as well. This is gonna be quick and easy. I'm gonna try and do it in real time. But I've said that, I've probably, Jinx myself, and I'm probably going to end up having to uh, edit this and take a load of it out because I'm probably going to end up faffing, or doors going to go, or someone's going to ring the phone or something. You know the usual crap that goes wrong. Um, I'm kind of recording this bit on the fly as well because I just had the idea of oh that'll work well as quite as a short thingy video. So there's some stuff out of the screen, uh, like crap in the sink and stuff that normally I would have sorted out before I started recording the video, but I haven't got time to do it now. So any steak meal. Uh, really hinges on the steak and this steak you might not have seen before you might have done I'm not, I don't want to condescend but if you haven't this is a hanger steak or a ongolette steak or in America I believe this is called a skirt steak but you know America's all funky weird with what they call their steaks strip steak is a sirloin and a sirloin is a rump and a rump it apparently doesn't exist it's uh, this is from kind of the belly, it's attached to the diaphragm and it used to, and I think some places still do class it more um, offal than a cut of steak because it technically comes from inside the carcass, not the musculature attached to the bones on the outside. Historically this has been like the, the butcher cut because it's not much meat there. That attached with some other trimmings and stuff that would come off is just the one steak. And it was never really particularly prized because even though it's rare, it's it was just kind of seen as a bit of a scrap meat because it was again like from the inside of the carcass and stuff like that. But lately it has started to make a bit of a comeback. It's been one of those sort of like secret cuts that like people who really know about their steaks and butchers and a few people like that know about this steak. But now more and more people are hearing about it. It's quite a strong flavor. It's really kind of beefy where it is kind of from inside near the organs to not put too uh, fine a spin on it, it has got that bit more of a very strong, almost offly flavour. Flavour, quite minimally, but it is a great, great bit of steak. You can get hold of it. It's not ridiculously expensive, but it is starting to unfortunately get to that sort of hipstery sort of point where oh, it's the it's a bit of an en vogue steak, so the prices are a bit higher. It is probably my favourite bit of steak, alongside a ribeye, depending on the quality of either, really. But, um, I would suggest, if you can't get hold of Anglet, get yourself a nice bit of ribeye, or get your favourite bit of steak, really. It's completely up to you. What I'm saying at the moment, though, is, if you, if possible, if you can, try and shop local. Go to your local butchers. Um, if you've got a smaller family, or locally owned butchers, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, all those people, they don't need your money. If you've got a shop there, you've got a shop there, that's fine. These are all from Sainsbury's. I can't get farm shop sort of stuff. I am in London. I can't really get to anywhere that sells fruit and veg that's from a farm, unfortunately. But yeah, try and shop local if possible. Chances are, if you go to your butchers and you talk to your butchers, you're gonna get a better, it's gonna give you better cut quality meat anyway, and it's not gonna have been packaged and sat in a, 
sat somewhere for as long. That being said, even if you do end up with like a really crappy, cheapy bit of meat, steak and lamb this applies to, you can always, always up its game a lot by doing this. So I got this out about two, three hours ago. It's quite chilly in here. It's one a very cold January. So it's not been that warm. If it was the summer, I might have only got it out half hour to an hour before, depending on how warm it was in here, this kitchen. But even then with red meat, if it's fresh, if I know where it's come from, I'm a little bit less finicky about keeping it in the danger zone. So I've got it out. If you've got a wire cooling rack for baking cakes and stuff like that, that's just, just perfect as well. What you want is just 360 degree airflow. So pack it dry with a bit of tissue paper, um, kitchen roll, kitchen, kitchen paper, or a crappy old tea towel if you've got that sort of thing. And let it dry out, so that way you get a much better sear. And also it comes up to room temperature, so when it hits the pan, it instantly starts cooking. You don't have to worry about the core taking forever. We are only gonna be cooking this for medium rare. I think that's how onglet steak, uh, skirt steak, hanger steak works best. Uh, it's kind of a little bit fatty, but also a bit lean. It's not quite as fatty as a ribeye, but more so than a rump or a fillet, definitely. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's got this quite, almost looks stringy grain structure. This steak works really well for marinades for that reason. And it also, I like it for fajitas and things like that. You can cut it in half or cut it into freeze, cut it into a few strips that way. And you're always cut, chewing against the, you're cutting it against the grain, you're always breaking it down. It breaks down really well. Right, so I'm going to cook one of these. I think I'm going to go for the thicker boy. It has got a bit of decent marble. They are kind of slightly marbled. You can see that marble in there. That's really, if you're, if you're a, uh, going out for a bit of ribeye or even a bit of sirloin, that's what you're looking for, that you want that nice bit of marbling. All right, wash the hands. So I'm gonna do with it some sauteed mushrooms and some padrone peppers. These, if you've not had them before, are kind of like, they look like a chili pepper, but they're not spicy at all. They're sort of like, almost, it's kind of like eating a, a mini green pepper, kind of a bit like okra almost as well in some ways. Just got a nice, Kind of bitter, but kind of savoury flavour. And I think it goes really well. It's a really nice bar snack. I've been places where they have it as a bar snack. You just, in a screaming hot pan, blister them up, cover them in salt. So we're gonna have some uh, char-grilled padrone peppers, sauteed uh, mushrooms, and I'm gonna make a sauce Diane to go with it, which is gonna use a bit of brandy, a bit of beef stock, a bit of double cream. We're gonna make that in the pan, that the steak was cooking in. Get all those pan juices. It's essentially, it's a pan sauce. I used to make it table side back in the 70s, I think it was. But yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try and do this in real time. So I'm just quickly wash a couple of these mushrooms. Right, there's the mushrooms. Right, first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna put together the base of our sauce. Like I said, I am doing this for just me lonesome. So if you were doing this for two, if you're lucky enough to be locked down with your significant other, or unlucky enough, depending on how you view that, <laughs> no comment. Um, adjust accordingly, so just double everything I'm doing. But, uh, so this is proper beef stock that needs to be kept in the fridge. If you've got homemade, use homemade. If you haven't, and you've only got the, you make up some beef stock, that's fine as well. Just go with like the best sort of stock you can get your hands on. I hope you can hear that over the jingling of my spoons. So this, you're gonna need two tablespoons. Of that. And one teaspoon of wash sauce. Doesn't matter, you get a little bit extra in there for that, that's all good. And two teaspoons of mustard. Uh, Dijon would probably be so probably definitely be traditional. I couldn't for love nor money get hold of Dijon. So I have got, which I actually in that situation think is the best substitute, really good quality yellow mustard like fringes. Cause that's that same sort of creaminess, but also tart -ness. Did I just put one in? I need two of them. So two teaspoons of the mustard and some hot sauce. Three or four plugs. I'd probably say it's a quarter of a teaspoon of hot sauce. So half if you were doing this for two. So I'm just gonna give that a little careful mix together. This we will combine in the pan with a 
cream and stuff to make a proper sauce. So set that to one side for now. Right, so uh, I've got my pans on preheating. So I'm using a nice big cast iron for the padron peppers and the mushrooms and then I'm gonna do the steak and the sauce in the carbon fiber pan. If you need to cook the steak first, put it to one side, make the sauce, put that to one side, keep that warm and then do everything on its own because you've only got one frying pan. Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to do that step by step. But what I would say is wherever your biggest, heaviest pans are is always your best bet for a steak. So first things first, do you like my new knife? It's the old Bradleone Signature Series by Lanson. I've got myself a big boy chopper. It's a board scraper, it's a crusher, it's a chopper, it's a cleaver. Love it. Right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice up relatively thickly. Is that a word? My mushrooms. And I'm gonna let them on first because, pro tip, you can't overcook a mushroom. You can burn a mushroom. So if you like whack it on a really hot direct heat, it will burn. But in a pan, especially if you've got a bit of butter with it, it uh, will never burn. It will, it will never overcook. It will never overcook. It just intensifies, intensifies, intensifies those mushroomy flavors. So, bit of olive oil in a pan. And whack our mushrooms in. Try and spread them out for now, get them, each one of them face down. You've made a load of surface area there. You wanna brown up all that surface area up. Well, you can just leave them. Now, next step, we're gonna get the, uh, the steak on. So this is where it's gonna get, uh, probably gonna get a bit noisy, because I'm gonna need to put my extractor on, because if you're not making a load of smoke, you're not cooking a, a steak properly. Uh, so I'm gonna cook this steak really hot, really fast. Olive oil's not really your best bet because it's not got quite as high a smoke point. So I'm gonna go use some sunflower oil and I'll whack that heat up to high. And I'm gonna salt the steak quite liberally. A lot of this isn't gonna, is gonna come off. And pepper. So as soon as that's smoking, Salted side in and down. Should start sizzling straight away. Salt on the other side. Pepper. And leave. Just leave it. Well that's going. Then move on to the onion. So yeah, I'm using one spring onion. And not all of it at that. So. Traditionally, this would be a shallot or two. I haven't got any shallots, I've got spring onions. So, you would also traditionally have in here some chives that you would uh, chuck in at the end. So this kind of is that middle ground between a shallot and a chive, if you ask me. So we're gonna mince that bad boy up nice and Fine. There's bits like this that I'm probably going to end up having to cut out because it's just boring silence. And I have not trying to get the length of my videos down a fair bit as it is anyway. So, give our steak a little check. Got a nice bit of char. So we're going to turn that over. Have a little look at our mushrooms. Yeah, so they're ni nice and brown on one side so we can flip them over. So once these are done, like I said, you can't really overcook them. So what you can do is just leave them in that pan on a low heat for ages and they'll just keep reducing down almost, essentially. And you'll just get more and more concentrated mushroomy goodness. So what I am gonna do is move them all to one side. Give them a bit of a salt. I'm gonna salt the mushroom. And I'm gonna chuck in some padrone peppers in this other side. Uh, I'll put a bit of salt in there. Right, so now 
can't really do much until that steak's done, but what you can do is get yourself a plate ready to put the steak on, to rest it while we get ready to make, while we make the sauce in the pan. Another little turn. Uh, some cuts of this you can see, or that almost have been triangular. It's kind of going that way here, you can see like along that edge there. So you might want to fold it onto that third sign. Sign? Side, sometimes. I am actually going to whack these peppers in this pan just to get them started off in that higher heat because we want to blister them a bit like that so it's almost starting to char and burn right now they've charred blackened off a bit I'm going to move them into back to this pan and I'll turn that pan down and I am going to sear off that last edge just a little bit turn the heat down right take that off nice bit of char to it let that tet rest and we let this pan start to cool down a bit get ourselves a half decent knob of butter and our chopped shallots onions whatever you have used now that butter and the shallots oh wow that was not a great sound uh, the butter and the shots are gonna look like they're burning keep them moving because they will because the pan's still really hot but a lot of that is the char that you're picking up from the, the remains of the steak you should suck those mushrooms the onions should start to brown and cook down really quickly so we're going to go in with a tablespoon of cognac or brandy if you're not as posh That's gonna go right up quick. You don't even need, you don't really need to ignite it. You just need to give it a bit of time to cook off. Right, so once that's cooked off for a few seconds, go in with the sauce mixture we made earlier. Get that all stirred together. So now that pan should be nice and deglazed as well. And if you have got any accumulated resting juices, pour them back in the pan. Right, so now I've actually turned the heat off because that pan holds that heat really well. So if you've got a stainless steel pan or a, or a, or if you happen to use just like a normal standard sort of, what do you call it, non-stick pan, you might want to keep that, might have needed to put that on the lowest heat. The last bit of the spring onion that's quite green, I've now just minced up as well. That's gonna go in. If you use normal onion, you'd use probably a tablespoon of onion and then some chives. And we're gonna go in with a tablespoon of thick, heavy cream. Now you wanna make sure your pan's cooled a fair bit down at this point because that cream will split. Right, give that a stir in. That is sauce Diane. The mushrooms are all lovely sauteed and brown. Uh, got mushrooms on a plate. And check out Padron peppers. And carry over. with your sauce right hopefully you can hear me properly now there you go we got ourselves a quite fancy if I do say myself bit retro steak meal for one try to type the plate up a bit because I need to take a photo for the thumbnail but there you go Hopefully, that's actually gone out in real time. If I have had to faff about here and there, I probably will cut bits because no one like it's a pain in the ass just watching me faff. But uh, I would have only cut out. So if you don't need to faff the same sort of way I faff, you can knock this out essentially in that, the amount of time this video is long, minus the intro and the outro. And not really any crazy ingredients. Like I said, if you can't get hold of hanger steak, 
try and get hold of it. It's really worth trying. If you like your steak, it's a really nice steaky steak. It's really great steak. It works really well. It's great for barbecuing as well. And like I said, it holds a marinade really well. It great, it's great for fajitas. It slices, if you slice it nice and thin, it's really well for steak sandwiches and steak rolls and stuff like that as well. Sauteed mushrooms, great accompaniment with a, mus with a, a bit of steak. And like I said, the padron peppers are kind of a bar sack, quite a few places, um, steak places are starting to do them as a side as well. Uh, you just pick it up, eat it like a cherry. Or you can slice it with a knife and fork if you want. You, the stem isn't edible. You could slice them all off the before, but I don't see the point. Like I said, I pick them up and eat them with my hands. I haven't done any potatoes because I am trying to be a bit healthier and lose a bit of timber now that it, January's rolled around. But by all means, use any size you want. If you want some sauteed potatoes, some chips, if you want some mashed potato, I'll put a link up. They're, uh, I've got a pretty decent recipe for some mash if you want that. Whack that up there. But yeah, there you go. Robert's your mother's brother. Hopefully you had an all right Christmas and New Year. I don't know if I've had a video out yet that wasn't recorded in the New Year. I think this is my first one of the New Year that I've recorded. Got some more stuff lined up, don't worry about that. The last video I put up, I think as of time of recording this, was my Christmas special with the leftover turkey that actually did really well. I mean, it only has like 60 odd views, but it got 60 odd views in like two days. I mean, usually my videos probably would creep up to 20 views after the end of a month or so. But, say lovey, back in another lockdown, so I've got plenty of time to be indoors and test some stuff out and hopefully shoot some more bits and pieces. Hit the like, please do like the video, it works, it really does help. Um, the YouTube algorithm, it just runs on likes and views, and if you've got this far, you've already done the view, so if you just do that little bit extra, hit the like, that's brilliant. Also, my Instagram's in the descri description. Hit that, uh, follow me on Instagram as well, because why not? I post loads of food porn, and if you think my food looks good, I put even more up there. There's a lot of stuff that I cook during the week just for me or before the lockdown started again, me and my girlfriend and that sort of stuff. So hit me up on there for other hints, tips, tricks, see what I'm up to. And yeah, cool. Hope you're all doing good. Hope the lockdown's not too bad on yours, but we'll get through it. It'll be all right. It's, we've, we've, we're used to this now. It's, it's, it's old hat. Yeah. Right, cool. I will see you when I see you. Probably be, hopefully, quite soon. I'm trying to knock these out about one a week. It's ever so slightly longer than one a week, so that it's not always on the same day of the week. It is what it is. All right, then, I'll uh, love you and leave yous. I'm going to go wolf down my state, and I'll uh, see you when I see yous. See you later, happy people.